Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. Subscribe, like, share. Um, and yeah, um, I just wanted to talk about Philip Meadows. He's a police officer. Caught um, drug dealing. There's no other word for it. I mean, they're not calling him a drug dealer, but that is what he is. Carrying £91,000 sterling pounds worth of heroin and cannabis into jail to sell it. Now, you know, what amazed me was when I was reading about it, the amount of excuses they made. This is a person who's put in a place of trust. And yet, he's, he's drug dealing in a prison, a prison officer. And then, you know, you've got the courts and, and lawyers saying, oh, he was in debt and he didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to pay his way. And so this is what he thought he was doing. He was scared to go back into the prison. Some prisoner asked him to get it for him. And he was afraid of the repercussions if he didn't take it in. £91,000 worth for one prisoner. I don't think so. But these are the excuses. Can you imagine if that was a black man with that amount of illegal drugs smuggling it into a prison? Can you imagine? And you know how much he got? Four years. Four years. I think it's really, really disgusting how they have one rule for one, another rule for another, one term for one person and another per term for another. At no point did they call him a drug dealer. At no point a drug trafficker, a menace to society, which is what the, the scourge of the earth which is what they call black people when they're caught with a bit of weed or a bit of cannabis. That's what they call black people. They call them all the terrible names under the sun. And yet this guy, police officer, oh, he was a father, he had children and all of this kind of stuff. He's normally a wonderful man, a very honourable man. You know, I just I just get so peed off with it because, you know what, if you're a drug dealer, you're a drug dealer. And a rose by any other name is still a rose. And you can pretty it up all you want. Anyway, let me just read it. Anyway, I didn't know Anne Belief. I learned a couple of things when I was reading this. Number one, I didn't know cigarette packets were standardised. That shows you I'm not a smoker. I didn't know Anne Belief. Um, the roll-ups were uh, banned and in prison they're more expensive than controlled drugs and I also didn't know that as of May um, next year you'll only be able to buy 30 grams and over of roll-ups they're discouraging people from buying the small packets because they're saying if they have to buy the larger packets it'll make them think twice about smoking They've already done away with the packets of 10, um, suggesting that if they've got to pay six, seven or eight or nine quid for a packet of cigarettes, they'll think twice about smoking. But hey, I learned quite a lot um, doing this, um, looking at this article. Anyway, the source is the Echo. I'll put the link below. Um, a prison officer caught trying to smuggle thousands of pounds worth of drugs into a jail has himself been put behind bars. Suspicions about father of four, Philip Meadows, had earlier been raised by a sniffer dog during an unannounced search by a team investigating the supply of illegal items into the H Her Majesty's prison in Liverpool. I didn't even know they did checks on staff. That's pretty good. Anyway, but nothing was found and he was allowed into work. The next day, assuming that the coast was clear, he arrived for duty but was again picked out by drug dogs. And £91,000 worth of heroin and cannabis resin was found in his car. Jailing 31-year-old Meadows today for five years, four months, oh, it's five years, four months, Judge Andrew Maneri, QC, said, 
you were doing it plainly to raise money. You had some debt and saw this as a way of paying that debt and so your motivation was purely commercial. I am told that you were asked to get involved by a prisoner on the inside and having agreed to do that and taken on that enterprise to an extent you were trapped in a cycle of supply. But this is an explanation, not an excuse. The supply and drugs, drug dealing. The contraband included 11 pouches of amber leaf tobacco, which is also a banned item, and the judge pointed out it is at least as valuable, if not more, than controlled drugs. Um, let me see. Yeah, I was wondering how prisoners made money, so I just added this bit in. Prisoners may have money from what they themselves bring into prison what is sent by family and friends or what they earn in prison. Because I was thinking, if he's got that amount of drugs, where are the prisoners going to get the money from to pay for the drugs? But then I learned they get a little salary. I think they're allowed £15.50 a week. Um, I think if you're retired age and you are not able to work, you get £3.75 a week. So I guess they accumulate that money and they're able to buy drugs with it. They can only spend money up to an approved weekly limit depending on their remand or convicted status and their behaviour as assessed under the incentives and earned privilege scheme. Any money that is paid to prisoners for work or sent in from family is stored by the prison and then transferred electronically to the prisoner on a weekly basis depending on their weekly spending limit. So I guess it's, I guess they have some kind of phone or something if it's sent electronically. I mean, do they have a bank account? I don't know. Prisoners must provide for everything else themselves. They must purchase phone credit themselves and pay to rent a TV. The money that a convicted prisoner can spend is also restricted based on their behaviour and level of incentives and earned privileges. A prisoner is able to spend per week £25.50. However, in practice, most prisoners are limited to being able to spend £15.50. Prisoners can earn money in various ways while in prison. These activities include education and training, prison services, jobs such as cleaning or mentoring, and commercial workshops within prisons. There are also a relatively small number of prisoners who have access to release on temporary license, who are paid by external employers. Didn't know that. For those who do not take part in purposeful activity, retirement pay, £3.25 per week, is offered to those who are above the national retirement age and choose not to work. And a base rate of unemployment pay is offered to those who are unable to work in the prison and for unconvicted prisoners who have the right to choose not to work. What do they mean by unconvicted prisoners? I thought if you're in prison you had to be convicted, so how can you be unconvicted? have to look that up. Anyway, I only wanted to put that out there because, you know, if if a prison officer is bringing that amount of drugs into a prison, I was just wondering how they how he expected to make money from it. I wonder where he would have stuck it. And you would have thought he would know this sniffer dogs. Very, very strange. Anyway, Meadows has been working as a probational but probationary prison officer at the prison, which houses 700 prisoners since October 2017. On, on September 19th last year, a search of staff took place without warning and a sniffer dog indicated the presence of drugs on Meadows Holdall. It was searched and nothing was found. The next morning at 7.45am another search was held and Meadows was stopped at the gate to house. A drug stock indicated his leg and a second dog indicated his jacket, said Miss Gaskell. Officers from the regional crime unit arrived to search his vehicle in the car and the JD sports bag was seen through the window on the front passenger seat and opening on opening the door there was an overwhelming smell of cannabis and the dog immediately indicated the sports bag. 
When an officer looked inside, there was a white plastic carrier bag containing 11 pouches of amber leaf tobacco. And when looked in, there appeared to be cannabis in one and heroin in another. Well, hmm, a prisoner asked him to bring pouches in. I said that. He reckons a prisoner asked him to bring in pouches and he refused, but then agreed and having agreed, regretted it almost immediately, as if. So anyone who wants to get them illegal drugs, when you're in a position of trust, you're going to do it. Is that what he's saying? Just because a prisoner asked him for to get some drugs, he felt as though he had to do it. What a feeble excuse. He had the drugs for some time, apparently. He was scared of the consequences of not taking them into prison. What a load of bullshit. £91,000 worth. So, stupidly, he made the wrong decision and finds himself in a position he is now facing a substantial custodial sentence. They described him as honourable, supportive husband and father and a hard-working man who helps in the community unpaid by tidying parish hall grounds. He's the youngest child in 16 months and his father is extremely ill. He is extremely sorry and, re and remorseful. He is ashamed of himself and worried what the future holds for his family. Yeah, let a black man tell you that story and see if he gets any sympathy. And that's all I've got to say, folks. Bye.